Let's start by roasting the vegetables in the oven. I have a selection of veggies here like I have taken some diced pumpkin, kumara, potato, onion and sliced mushrooms. Of course you can take any vegetables of your choice but do not skip the pumpkin, potato and onions. Let's start by seasoning our vegetables before they go into the oven for which here I have taken some olive oil. Sprinkle some salt on top followed by garlic powder. Using clean hands, just coat the veggies well with the oil, salt and garlic powder. The onions and the mushroom would take lesser time in the oven to roast as compared to the root vegetables. Uh, we are going to roast both the trays at uh, 200 degrees Celsius for approximately 15 to 20 minutes but the exact timing would definitely vary depending upon what kind of vegetables you are using and also the size of your vegetables like how small or how big you have chopped them. So it depends upon these factors. I'll write down the details of the timings it took me for to roast these vegetables in the description box below. Meanwhile, let's start preparing the roux or the white sauce for which here I have taken some butter in a saucepan. Once the butter is all melted, let's add in some flour. Stir this all well and cook the flour for at least a minute or so until the starch in it gelatinizes. Now that our flour is all cooked, let's add in the milk. Uh, do remember to stir it continuously though. Stirring continuously, cook the mixture until it thickens and it becomes a sauce like consistency. Don't worry, it won't take longer, hardly 2 to 3 minutes. The flour will absorb all the moisture and you will get a beautiful white sauce in no time. Ain't that looking so saucy, beautiful, glossy, and that lump free sauce makes me want to lick it straight from the pan. This is the consistency that we are after. Once it thickens and turns into a sauce like consistency, we will start adding our roasted vegetables, followed by some sliced almonds, cheese, um, I have used parmesan cheese here, garlic powder and chili flakes. Any herb of your choice, I have used some chopped dill here. Mix it all well. We have already added some salt to the vegetables while roasting and also the cheese in here has some salt in it. So do a taste test first and then if you feel the need add salt and more chili flakes to suit to your family needs. Now that our uh, filling is ready, let's add it to our ramekins. At this stage you can make the filling ahead of time and store it in the refrigerator for about 3 to 4 days and in the freezer for more than a week. A perfect party pleaser that I would highly recommend you guys to try it the next time. So fill the ramekins right up to the brim so that the puff pastry sits properly on top of it. Um, thaw the puff pastry sheet as per the package instructions and then you can use a cookie cutter that's bigger in size than your ramekins. 
If you do not have one, then definitely go ahead and use your knife, uh, cut the pastry sheet into half and then quarter it down, place it directly on top of the ramekins. That's it. Let me show you both ways now. Uh, so first let's take the cookie cutter and cut out the sheet into a circle. Gently lift the puff pastry and place it on top of the ramekin, like so. And for the second one, we will lift the puff pastry up, place it on top of the ramekin, like we did previously. The only difference here is that we will cut off the excess puff pastry using a sharp, uh, small knife. It is important to brush the top of a puff pastry with a beaten egg for that golden color, the shine and glossiness on top of it. If you do not eat eggs, of course you can use milk here. Finally, make a slit in the center of the puff pastry using a knife so that the excess steam can pass and the puff pastry rises with beautiful laminations. Let's bake this in a preheated oven of 210 degrees Celsius for around 20 minutes. As you can see, the one that I had quartered and then placed has bulged out well, whereas the one with the cookie cutter, it has not risen much. That is because when I cut it with the cookie cutter, it seems I have pressed it too hard due to which the layers got squished and it did not rise up. So that's the mistake that I did. So I would recommend you guys henceforth to go for the quartered look. But if you kind of like this one, you can choose this as well, no problem at all. Both of them will be flaky as you can see If you like my today's video then do smash that like button, share it with your friends and family, comment below and let me know what filling would you like in your pie and also most importantly subscribe to Spices and Flavors for more such baking related recipes and yes hit that bell icon. I will see you next time until then this is Sushma signing off from Spices and Flavors. Take care. Bye bye.